الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي انزل الكتاب بالحق والميزان وما يدريك العدل الساعه قريب استعجل بها الذين لا يؤمنون بها والذين امنوا يشركون منها ويعلمون انها الحق من ربهم الا ان الذين يمرون في الساعه لفي ضلال بعيد اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوح والذي اوحينا اليك وما وصينا به ابراهيم وموسى وعيسى ان اقيموا الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه. اشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ورحمته للعالمين صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين. اما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته. Let me begin by welcoming our Sheikh Dr. Jazakallah khairan. I mean this is years after the year he is coming to us. I was just saying that uh, what he have been here yesterday because normally he comes on Friday, give the khutbah here, motivates people, and then here this time he couldn't make it. So inshallah, we'll make it a pattern now to make sure that you're here on a Friday rather than this one because you have many people to benefit from this in the Jumas that we have. Uh, secondly, to welcome you on behalf of Islam has been officially and Islam to welcome you and welcome all the brothers that we have. Uh, what I suggested to Sheikh Turk is that basically I wanted him because he's the key person to speak. But I'm going to introduce, hopefully, give you an introduction to what he is going to speak about, and I will leave the core uh, speech about the five rights to him. Uh, but let me begin where I began. I began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I said, Alhamdulillah. I am in the habit when I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I praise him with two words. Oh, drop up the sword. Now, I said I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his words. Um, I don't know whether I said this last time because sometimes you go on record as. Okay. Okay. So, when I, I meant it, when I say that um, I always praise Allah by saying Alhamdulillah, and then I quote Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I might have said this before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us how to praise him in many places. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised himself before anyone praised him. And this is why um, in certain chapters, actually five chapters in the Quran, Allah starts by Alhamdulillah. Allah himself starts by Alhamdulillah. The most we all know is Surah Al-Fatiha. We all say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So Allah opened the Surah by saying Alhamdulillah. Now the second Surah is Surah Al-An'am. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi khalaq as-samawati wal-ard wa ja'ala al-zulumati wal-nur, summa alladhina kafaru bi rabbihim ya'adilun. All praise is due to Allah who has created the heavens. Like Allah, again, starts by praising himself. Now, the third chapter in the Quran, if you are coming down, the Quran is Surah Al-Kaf, the cave. Allah began the Surah by praising himself, by saying, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi anzal ala abdihi al-kitab, wa lam yaj'al lahu iwajah. Now, the fourth Surah is Surah Saba, Shiba. Alhamdulillah, alladhi lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the surah by praising himself. And then the last surah is surah Fatir, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillah, Fatir al-samawati wa al-ard. Like Allah begins by saying Alhamdulillah, and then he quotes what he wants to tell us. Now, um, and many places in the Quran, qalu alhamdulillah, inna alhamdulillah. Like, this is all the time Allah teaches us how we praise him. Also, we can praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with 99 names. Yeah, you can say Alhamdulillah al-Rahman, Alhamdulillah al-Rahim, Alhamdulillah al-Malik, Alhamdulillah al-Quddus, Alhamdulillah al-Salam, to the end of the 99 names. You can praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by what the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam used to praise his, himself. Famous, we know this in the khutbah, inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'in. Uh, alhamdulillahi alladhi lahuma. Yani Allah and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam taught us a great deal about praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, one of the famous hamd that the Prophet used to say when he used to say Alhamdulillah, hamdan yukafi'u ni'ama wa yuafi mazida. All praise it to Allah as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us and so forth. So when I began I said Alhamdulillah and then I made a quote from the Quran. Especially to do with what we are saying now. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Alhamdulillah, alladhi anzal al-kitab bil-haqq wal-mizan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah alladhi anzal al-kitab. This book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed it to be the truth. 
and then mizan in Arabic is literally means balance but mizan also means accuracy consistency like this is the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it and he sent it for us to live by it actually sent it for humanity to live by it and this is why uh, the, the I mean especially the mashallah uh, the brothers who are basically de devoted themselves to serve the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why Allah says alhamdulillah I said and the kitab al haq wal mizan then instantly Allah says wa ma yudrika la'alla as-sa'ata qareeb like we spoke before that uh, well, the, the major signs of the hour are major signs that Allah taught us. But among the main signs is the Prophet, the Prophet والسلام, like the coming of Muhammad is a sign of the hour. Like this is the first sign that Allah gave us to, to us. And this is why the Prophet used to say, Ana like, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ الْعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ قَرِيبٍ you know, who knows, the hour can be any time. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, people who disbelieve in the hour, they say, where is this hour? Right? وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مُشْفِقُونَ مِنْهَا Why? يَعْلِمُونَ أَنَّهَا الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِ We know it's going to come for us. Now, I started with this because this actually relates the Qur'an from the beginning of time to the end of time. Like Allah tied the Qur'an to be خلاص, the final message of Allah. Allah protected, preserved it so that all humanity should live by this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then I said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. And then I quoted another verse because the sequence of the message from Adam alayhi salam to the end of the message that was actually finalized by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a sequence. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when I said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, I said, Shara alakum min ad deen. Allah said, Allah has prescribed for you, decreed for you from this deen. شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوح والذي أوحينا إليك to the Prophet عليه الصلاة وما وصينا به إبراهيم وموسى وعيسى أن أقيم الدين this دين all of it is actually included in this book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى this is why there is no book that is being kept until now except the Quran and this is why the Quran becomes the focus of all of us that we have uh, to think about it. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إنه لقرآن كريم في كتاب مكنون يعني Allah sealed this book to remain as the book that will go with us until the day of judgment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even included not only the human beings but also the jinn. And this is why Allah created us as Allah says in the Quran for no reason but to worship him. That's it. And Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْإِنسَ وَالْجِنِّ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Now, how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's through this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the book also includes in it the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we have the message and the messenger. And they are tied together in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words and we have to this. This is why for centuries people paid a lot of attention to the Qur'an. Inshallah, when the Shaykh deals with the five rights of the Qur'an, you will see the reflection of all what I'm going to see. This is why, right from the beginning, people were very concerned and actually carefully documented how the Qur'an was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How the wahi came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. Where the instances that came to. How it prolonged until all these 23 years of the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the time it started until the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. Allah concluded the message by saying to him, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Khalas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed it and fanaized. Alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullah. Marhaba. Then... Um, there is a clear distinction that people made between the words of the Prophet and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where we, so the study actually reflected on, we all know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa where the hadith became what is the Quran, the difference between that. Also another area of people wanted to know how the Quran was revealed basically. The beginning of the chapter, like the, the beginning of the revelation to the end of the revelation, all of these became areas of study because people knew that the Quran should be looked after in all of this. Also, people wanted to know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Although the Quran is a book that was revealed from, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the end of time, but there are specific incidents that actually were related to the revelation of the Quran. And this is why people wrote books 
on what is called Nuzul al-Qur'an, like Asbab al-Nuzul and so on. All of this became another area of study that people have uh, to do it. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the Qur'an gave us, like uh, when we see, first we have to recite the Qur'an, we have to know all the rules and the ahkam, and people are very careful to document all of this and to take them throughout the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came. For all of us, we know that the, a major part of the Qur'an is the tafsir itself. People want to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demanded from us. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal certain verses? How does it compare with all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us? The Qur'an itself it speaks about things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for instance, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Imran, Alif Lam Mim Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum, Nazzal alayka al kitab bil haqq, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayh, wa anzal al Tawrat wa al Injila min qabl, what does Allah say? Hudal lil nas. So this became guidance to all humanity. And the Qur'an actually says, when it is revealed, it revealed to all of humanity. But it benefits only believers. That's why you see in Surah Al-Baqarah, for instance, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه, Allah specifically said, Hudan lil muttaqeen. So there is a general message for everyone, but the people who really take the Qur'an seriously, who are the people who really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, منه آيات محكمات, هن أم الكتاب. Then people went to study in Muhkama and Mutashabi, and there are so many areas. All of this is actually to see these are all right towards understanding the Quran and learning this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that people can have it for it. Then actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also taught us something else in the Quran where Allah says, Man ansakh min ayah. I just by the way came with a PhD thesis in Sheikh Abdullah. Um, this chef from Mauritania, we went to Umrah and he told me this is the last work he has. Naam. La Shinqiti. So actually I went to his house, he gave me this book, I have it now. This is one of the books that I was looking for. Because the issue of al-nasikh wal mansukh which when abrogated verses, where is the abrogation, where is this? Because all of this has to do also with knowing this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I got that book from him and it took me so much time, I joked about it when I was in the plane telling the people that there are some books you have to read the page five times to understand what is being said in it. And it's such a comprehensive uh, work that these people sometimes, and I, I made this comment to him, that when some scholars write, they think they are writing to scholars. That's why they assume that people know a lot. But sometimes you need to detail things one by one so that it becomes easy for you to follow it. When there is an assumption, like say, for for instance, if there is a Muslim and you are talking to him, you assume so many things. But when you have a non-Muslim and you are talking to him, the story is totally different. You have to start from uh, what we call, we call, take it back to the basics so that you can understand it. The same thing, this is, became an, another field of study for people we have. Then of course came the question of Ijaz al-Qur'an. Uh, you know, conferences are being held. Books are being written, uh, seminars, workshops, name it. And people took every aspect of the Qur'an. They took the language. Now people say, uh, for Arab, the Qur'an really understood what is really miraculous about the Qur'an because they knew the language. They knew all the secrets of the Qur'an. This is why the Qur'an challenged them. Uh, that they cannot even dare to make a verse of it, not a surah of it, not all of this. Now, that became something that people actually have given all the time it was studied from A to Z. Now, then came the question of the history, where the Quran speaks about historical facts. And people who are in archaeology and sciences, and most of us are when it comes to the Ijaz al Quran, first thing comes to the people in this science things that we have. Recently, there is a discussion among schools uh, in North America here because now they are rewriting the curriculum for science. And they wanted to see how they can integrate science and the Quran. You know the debate that people have. That became another area for them. The question of jurisdiction and the laws and the um, things that are required, that became another thing that people have to go deep to study it on it. And there are so many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes it incumbent on us to engage ourselves to see what is our obligation towards the Quran and this is what I basically want to leave for them. And I'll stop here inshallah since Dr. Hassan is here to give him the time. And actually I deliberately want to give most of the time to Sheikh Turk to give us all that inshallah.
جزاك الله خير بارك الله فيك انا اشرح لك قدام دي سؤال ناو جست ثرو فيو احاديث اوف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اجازف ذيم اي جست وونت تو كيب ذيم ان ماي ذا فيرست ون ذات عائشه رضي الله عنها سيت سي هاو ذا بروت ون اكشلي ذيس از سيكونس لايك القراءه ذن ذا فهم القران ذن تو ديل ويز ذا قران ذن تو اكت اكول ذن تو سبريد ذا ورد اوف ذا قران رايت لوك ات وات ذا بروفيت عليه الصلاه والسلام انا سي ذيم كويكلي فور يو عائشه رضي الله قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الماهر بالقران الماهر بالقران مع السفره الكرام البرر وغير السفر هم الرسل يعني he said a person who really really um, يعني commands the Quran and has excellence in it Allah will put him with that rank of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala والذي يقرأ القرآن even the person who has a difficulty ويتتعتع فيه he said وهو عليه شاق فله أجران this is the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that the effort that a person has to make to study the Quran even if the tongue is not Arabic and you know طبعا most of the people who memorize the Quran now in the world are non-Arab يعني if you see the ratio of the people who are not from Arabia who memorize the Quran this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Quran easy for it Abu Musa al-Ash'ar radiallahu anhu قال this is a beautiful hadith I always related it قال مثل المؤمن الذي this is similitude the prophet that gave صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the similitude or the parable of a Muslim who read the Quran a mu'min and then he recites the Quran he said مثل الأترجة طبعا تقرأ الأترجة والأترجة الأترجة is a type of fruit that has a fragrance and it's a very sweet taste so the person who believes in Allah and he reads the Quran then he is like that fruit قال ومثل الذي لا يقرأ الذي المؤمن الذي لا يقرأ القرآن يعني a believer who is good but he doesn't read the Quran what is the example he said قال كمثل التمرة what does the date has? The date doesn't have any smell. You can have a heap of dates here. But the, sm the taste of the date is beautiful. Which means this person, he doesn't read the Quran, is still inside his God for that. قالوا مثلا المنافق الذي يقرأ القرآن Like he's a munafiq but he still reads the Quran. He said قالوا مثلا الريحان الريحان is a type of plant. It has a very beautiful smell. But it's a very sour taste. So he said this is the person who is munafiq but still he reads the Quran. وقال مثل المنافق الذي لا يقرأ القرآن كمثل الحمضلة. الحمضل actually I don't know whether you have it where you are but in Sudan we used to say if you touch حمضلة for days you have to wash your hand seventeen times to get the it's very sour and it has a very bad smell. So this is to see what we are. Uthman ibn Affar radiallahu anhu طبعاً said خيركم طبعاً said the قراءة now تعلم القرآن he said خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه this is the hadith in Bukhari the third عن عبد الرحمن بشير قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول تعلم القرآن but to recite it but to understand it فإذا علمتموه فلا تغلوا فيه he said don't be too hard on it ولا تهجروه like you don't desert the Quran ولا تأكلوا به ولا تستكسروا به من الدنيا and the Quran should be preserved for the worship of Allah سبحانه وتعالى عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه لتيد the hadith of the prophet where he says إن الله يرفع أقواما بهذا الكتاب ويضع به آخرين and people who really give the Quran is dues fulfill the Quran's right Allah will elevate them people who don't then Allah سبحانه وتعالى will put them down أبو موسى الأشعر رضي الله عنه قال تعاهد هذا القرآن فوالذي نفس محمد بيده لهو أشد تفلت من الإبل في عقلها يعني البروفيت عرص سايز when you memorize the Quran keep repeating it keep doing it because the Quran can slip from you and that's one of the major sins by the way if you let that what you know of the Quran slip your mind إن شاء الله yes Allah I'll show this to you so that we can prepare you for the إن شاء الله this speech for the Sheikh and the Sheikh تفضل إن شاء الله قل سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك